I gotta do like a count or something like that just, just to see how many of these videos we've made this year because it's been a whole lot. Anyway, YouTube team, keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video. Uh, and in this video, are Darius Washington, a guy who um, showed a lot of promise as an undrafted rookie free agent. Uh, Ravens gave him a significant signing bonus, so you could tell that they really liked him. Um, and somebody who a lot of Ravens fans were hoping would, would, would actually get some playing time um, especially when they've seen uh, Brandon Stevens struggle a bit this year, uh, and that's safety Ardarius Washington. Um, Ardarius Washington is is like one of the only like true, or him and Geno Stone, some of the only true free safeties that the Ravens have on the roster. Um, but you could tell like they with the pecking order that they were both last in line um, because of course first it was Deshaun Elliott and then. By, like we always said from jump, from preseason, you could tell the Ravens, they really love Brandon Stevens so much because of how they use him and how they always had him on the field. And they showed this right from preseason. They had Brandon Stevens on the field out there a lot. Um, so then when Deshaun Elliott, I remember in the Chiefs game, I want to say, Deshaun Elliott went out, uh, Brandon Stevens went in, well, Geno Stone, he went in a lot too. Um, but Brandon Stevens is clearly the guy that they are sort of grooming for that role. And then, unfortunately, when Deshaun Elliott went out for the year with injury, uh, it ended up being Brandon Stevens' time. And again, what we always say when evaluating Brandon Stevens, keep in mind, yeah, he is going to mess up. But keep in mind, he is a rookie. This is his first year, and he's playing a brand new position. So there's going to be those growing pains. Nobody should expect him to come out, oh, man, yeah, oh, he's killing it. He go I mean, it's nice when he does make good plays. It's great. But you have to set a realistic expectation for a player when it's their first time doing something that they're not used to. But then again, you know, the Ravens, they, they got this thing. They got this weird obsession with playing guys to spots that they're not used to and that they didn't do in college and it's it's just something anyway Ardarius Washington is out for the year with a broken foot uh so hopefully it's a, a clean break to where it can just repair itself wonderfully and the healing process is super smooth um, that sucks for him. That, that sucks. And and he wasn't somebody that had much playing time at all. Um, let's see, even Pookie's upset about it. Because shout out to Pookie. If you see the mic moving around, then that means Pookie knocked it over. Uh, but anyway, um, he's somebody that didn't get much playing time. But he, uh, it, it just still sucks to see his season in like this. Um, and he was somebody that a lot of us were hoping we could see. Hoping to get a little game action and whatnot. The expectations were pretty low. Um, but still, we were just, we were just hoping. Um, but it just, it never, nothing ever really came to fruition. So we'll see what happens with him next season. But shout out to him for, because he was in a tough spot. Like a really tough spot. Uh, and he, again, he, uh, safety in college. And he could play some corner too, like some slot corner or whatever. And that's what, he had done a little bit with the Ravens, just a bit. But he was somebody that had a lot stacked against him. Um, because on the roster, you had uh, guys like, um, obviously, Chuck Clark. You had Deshaun Elliott. So those two were locks for sure. Brandon Stevens being a third-round pick, he was a lock as well. Uh, but then you had Geno Stone. Who was doing his thing in preseason, especially well, was it the first game where he had what, two picks in one game, I think. Uh, but Geno Stone was doing his thing. Uh, our Darius Washington, now he, he had looked good too in preseason. So he really made a mark. He, he came out strong. And I was like, oh, well, we got some safeties that's already locked. So I don't know if he can make it, especially being an undrafted rookie free agent. But he made it. He made it. Um, so we'll see what happens with him uh, next year. Uh, I, um, I really still do believe though, that the Ravens, they, they just, they lack that true free safety that will, that would get playing time. Um, so I, I could definitely see them going in that route next year. Um, especially with 
because I think with Deshaun Elliott, he Ravens they they can't rely on him. I feel like with Deshaun Elliott, um, it's it's gonna be tricky for him next year heading into free agency. I think Ravens could, if they want to, I think they can keep him on a cheap one year deal. And we've said this before uh, when he when he was declared out for the year. I think the Ravens can keep him on a one a cheap one year deal if they want to. But you cannot. I feel like he and nothing against him, of course. Uh, he's done his thing and he's come a long way. Um, but I feel like Ravens just with the, with the business side, you can't rely on him to be your number one safety. He, you can't rely on him to be your number one option at, at free safety. And he's really a box safety. He's not really a true free safety. He was he was coming along with the position, but you still you need that that true free safety. And um, with the with the four years he's been in the league or four years and three out of the four years he's, he's been on season ending injury reserve and it's crazy because again it's, it's been f- three different injuries i was about to say four different injuries. Uh, it's been three different injuries that's taking him out for the year three different ones so it's not like oh man he got the same reoccurring injury that just keeps happening and happening. no it's been three different ones so that that's what makes it even more frustrating for deshaun elliott as a player and you got to feel for him like man um, but I just feel like the Ravens, they, they, they can't rely on him. Like, you want him, you love him in the locker room, you love his presence, you love his energy, because that dude, he brings it. You, you love his toughness, because he ain't afraid to go head up with nobody. But his body just keeps failing him. And you, you can't put all your eggs into that basket, uh, because it's, unfortunately, it, it's, it's let you down a lot. Um, so Ravens, I'm, I'm sure whether it's through the draft, whether it's through free agency, something um, next year is it's going to be a lot of change. Just when you think about it on this whole defense, not even just at the safety position at corner. Uh, we'll see what they do there, because I know before um, a lot, a lot of us not even due to his play, because a lot of us think, oh, Marcus Peters could be gone next year, but nothing to do with his play, only the salary cap. That was the only reason because of salary cap. You know, we love Marcus Peters, man. I, I think, I, I don't, uh, well, I know some people who don't like him, but a lot of it, we love Marcus Peters. Love him. His energy. And, and I, I remember, I don't know if, if any, any of y'all that was, um, that remember that video, there was a video that we did like a couple of days before he got declared out for the year. Him and Gus Edwards on the same day. Um, where... You could just hear like the when he was speaking at a presser one day, it was just so powerful. The way he spoke about the team, the way he spoke about what Lamar Jackson was doing for the kids, the way he spoke about um, just the youth and what you, and you could hear like that. He really meant what he was saying when it could. And that's that's why with Marcus Peters, Pookie, man, you're moving stuff with Marcus Peters. He he's not on the presses very often. He wouldn't be on those presses very often because, you know, you definitely ain't thinking keep it clean. But when he's on there, his the passion that comes across through his voice, you can hear it and you love it and you appreciate it. So, um, but with Marcus Peters as a player, he's nice and he was clearly missed with the Ravens this year. And I know that when the whole report about Xavier Howard came out, it was, people were like, oh, man, but, well, we didn't, if we would have got Xavier Howard, what would we do next year? What would we do next season? Worry about that next season. Like, that would be a great problem to have. Who, would, who, who wouldn't want to have that problem? Like, it's like some, some people, like, they, 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 they look for problems, and it's like they, they, it, it can be a good thing. Man, oh, man, man, we got Marlon Humphrey, we got Marcus Peters, and we got Xavier Howard. Man. Pookie, I wasn't calling you, man. I wasn't calling you. I love you. I wasn't calling you, though. But people were like, oh, man, yeah, we don't want a problem like that. Let the front office figure it out. That would be a great problem to have. Well, you got to pick and choose. Even if you could find a way, it'd be close to impossible. But even if you could find a way to keep all three. But that that would probably be very unlikely. You never know, though. You know, especially after this year. You know, after this season, Ravens value they, they, their their love and appreciation and value for cornerbacks is at an all time high. You know it is. So this is why this year, b- before this year, 
Um, and going into this season, a lot of us were thinking because of the salary cap, oh, yeah, Marcus Peters, he could possibly be gone. And he could still possibly be gone, but his value has gone through the roof um, with everything that they've been dealing with. And one thing that I think about, and we're getting ready to move on, but one thing that I, I think about with that, like with, with Wink, because you know Wink, he loves leaving all his cornerbacks on an island. And even if they're struggling, he loves leaving all his cornerbacks on an island, not giving them any kind of help. But anyway, um, if you had uh, Marlon Humphrey, if you had a Marcus Peters, and you had Xavier Howard, you could leave him on an island. I mean, we saw Xavier Howard was left on an island all night in the Dolphins game, and he did a pretty good job. Um, even on the same play, and it's crazy because I, I was looking at the replay. On the same play, this dude, he on the Sammy Watkins play, he forced the fumble and recovered the fumble. And return the fumble for a touchdown. <laughs> he was like, "Uh oh, hi, y'all should have traded for me. Man, any boo-boo. Anyway, um, so yeah, that, that would have been a great problem to have. But we'll see. We'll see. This offseason is going to be a lot of change, not just at the cornerback position, the defensive line. I don't think Brandon Williams is going to be back. Uh, I don't think Calais Campbell is going to be back. I don't think Derek Wolf is going to be back. It's going to be a lot of change, a whole lot of change. So we're going to see Anthony Averett. Another cornerback that's in question. I, I don't know if he's going to be back. I don't think so, but I don't know. But that defense is going to have some significant change. So we'll see how it goes. Now, speaking of somebody on defense, somebody who a lot of Ravens fans forgot about. And I can't blame them because in the pressers, his name, like before last week, well, before actually the, yesterday um, and the day before yesterday, too, you, you never heard his name in the presses. And what a lot of people have felt like has been sort of a stash. But, hey, who knows? Dalen Hayes. Dalen Hayes. I'm, I know my guy, Haitian Sensation, he called him Dalen Dip Hayes. Because we saw in the preseason, like, this dude, he, ooh, the little dip that he would do on it with his pass rush. When he would hit that, it'd be like, ooh, game over. Like, this dude was looking like a nice pass rusher. He was a fifth-round pick, and he, he was a, the lone fifth-round pick that made it. Because we know Ravens and them fifth-round picks in 2021. Ben Mason, cut. Hey, Ben Mason, come back through, big dog. We got you. Hey, we look forward to seeing you. We're going to get you on the practice squad. Just just come through. Nobody's going to pick up a fullback. We, we got you. We know you can. Uh, we got you, Ben. All right. All right, cool, Ravens. I got y'all boys. All right. Nope. Patriots, here we come. And then, of course, Sean Wade. And with Sean Wade, again, if y'all remember, I, I, when we traded Sean Wade to the Patriots, I was very frustrated. The reason I was very frustrated when we traded him is because the same thing that I said, it's happening and it's happened. And again, yeah, I know a lot of people, oh, well, Sean Wade, he wouldn't have made an impact on the Ravens because he was so down on the depth chart and he wouldn't have probably played anyway. Look what happened. Marcus Peters, out. Jimmy Smith, out. Anthony Averett, out. Now, with Jimmy Smith and Averett, it's not long-term stuff. Marcus Peters, obviously, out for the year. Well, Jimmy Smith, he was out for a little while with that high ankle sprain. And Marcus Peters, he's gone for the year. Anthony Averett, hopefully he can come back this week. And Tay-Tay, he's been here the whole season. He, he left for that Dolphins game a little bit. but And then Chris, Chris Westry, out. So you see what I, my, my biggest thing, the reason why I hated the Sean Wade trade was because I said it happens every single year. The secondary depth is tested. It's tested every year. But it is what it is, right? So anyway, uh, Dalen Hayes, the lone fifth round pick that survived. Um, he has been out, I think, man. I think he made his debut in either week two or three. I want to say week three, I think. I forgot when it was, but he, um, and I wonder if he was even fully healthy when he made his debut, but his debut was in and out. I think like on the first or second drive or whatever game it was, it was early in the game. Uh, he ended up going down to the ground and we never saw him again. Ravens put him on IR. Um, and he's, I mean, he's been eligible to come back because he's been on IR for a long time. Um, but we hadn't heard anything about him. No reporters had been asking about him in the presses. Nobody mentioned him. 
Um, the only time that they mentioned him was when he first went out uh, on injury reserve. But recently, um, somebody asked about him in, in yesterday's presser, and I think they asked about him a couple days ago, but definitely in yesterday's presser. Well, I'm recording this on Saturday morning. But definitely in yesterday's presser, they asked about him, and uh, Harbaugh said that he, he could start practicing soon. He could start practicing soon. He ain't give anything definitive, anything like that, but he said he could. So we'll see. We'll see. But I mean, <laughs> if he does come back, um, it, it ain't like he's going to be a, a, a pass rusher anyway. He probably going to be dropped back at safety knowing when. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, we love Wink, man. We, we love Wink. We love Ravens coordinators, man. We just situationally. Same thing we've been saying. saying and, and, I know, and that's another thing, too. I've been seeing a lot of people say, oh, man. Everybody hated Dean Pease because he was so laid back. He wasn't aggressive at all. He was just, hmm, all right, defense, go do your thing. He said, oh, man, everybody hated Dean Pease because of that. No. Well, at least not me. I can only speak for myself. I said the same thing with Dean Pease. I said he was not a bad defensive coordinator at all. But situationally, and it's the same thing with, with Wink, my same frustrations. He is not a bad defensive coordinator, but situationally, that's the frustration right there. Situationally. So that's the thing. Because over, okay, he's not bad. Just the, these situations have got to improve. The adjustments, the lack of adjustments. It's got to improve for sure. So, we'll see how that goes. Starting uh, in, against the Browns. Woo, boy, Ravens. Got, and, and imagine this. Think about this. Well, Brandon Williams, I, I believe he returned to practice. Um, but I think he's listed on the Ravens injury report as questionable. Like, let me look at this injury report. Because Darius Washington obviously out. Cedric Ogbui, he's out. Miles Boykin is out with dealing with his finger. But um, Brandon Williams, oh. Oh, he did. Oh, okay. Not injury related. They just let him rest on, on Friday. Okay. They gave him a rest day. All right. So he's questionable. He's, he's probably going to play, though. Uh, Calais Campbell, concussion. But imagine, so Brandon Williams is not set in stone that he'll play, but it's most likely that he'll play. But there's a possibility. There's always that possibility. It could be Brandon, no Brandon Williams and no Calais Campbell. It's looking like it's going to be no Calais Campbell. Because he's, if he's in concussion protocol and he ain't passed concussion protocol yet, ooh, big yikes. Um, but just imagine that. No Brandon Williams and no Calais Campbell. <laughs> versus Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt. Oh, yeah, that's going to be. And that Browns offensive line, they're getting one of their guys back, too. I want to say Wyatt Taylor. I forget his name. But anyway, they're getting one of their offensive linemen back. And, yeah, so this it is going to be, regardless if they play or not, it is going to be a stressful game on Sunday night. So it, it should be fun, though. But anyway, team, keep it clean. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Thank you for listening. Uh, shout out to Pookie. Pookie been in here for the video. Yep. I know she want to say what's up, man. Let's, let's, let's let Pookie take us out. Come on, Pookie. Come here. Oh, she did a big smile. She did a big smile. Say what's up to team. Keep it clean, Pookie. Come here. Say what's up. Oh, say what's up to team. Keep it clean, man. Say, all right. See y'all later, team. Keep it clean. We appreciate y'all. We love y'all. And we, okay, okay, we are out.